Erwin Rommel was a famed German field marshal and he rose to the highest ranks during World War II. During his service as a commander for the North African Africa Corps, he introduced strategic armored tactics that were deemed staggeringly successful. Rommel's success as a field marshal is also recounted in several German myths. According to one such myth, Rommel is depicted as a powerful, kind, and chivalrous German hero who isn't motivated by self-interests or any specific political or societal ideology. Because of his noble spirit and heroic feats, Rommel gained significant popularity among the German masses. Such was his popularity that he was regarded as the people's marshal by the masses. Throughout his career, he led and supported many crucial military endeavors. Owing to his spectacular performance, Rommel established himself as one of the most powerful army professionals during Hitler's tenure. Over the next few sections, we will learn more about Rommel, his early life, career, death, and the events that followed. Early Life and Career Erwin Rommel was born on 15 November 1891 in a small corner of Heidenheim, Germany. His father led a simple life as a teaching professional. However, Rommel had always been driven by military pursuits and he, therefore, chose to pursue his career in the domain. In 1910, he finally joined the popular German infantry. At that time, he was ranked lieutenant and he fought the First World War with the same rank. During the war, he supported German troops across several crucial regions like France and Italy. Later, he also joined troops in Romania. Following the war, Rommel rejected any form of usual advancement. Instead, he continued to serve the infantry for the rest of his time. Years later, in 1940 Rommel rose the ranks and was ranked the commander of the famous 7th Division. This was also known as the Panzer Division. In 1941, almost a year later, he further served as the commander of the North African Africa Corps. During this time, the warring Italian troops were losing to the British. The events occurred in North Africa and owing to their veracity, Hitler was compelled to assign Rommel to lead the troops in Libya. Rommel exceptionally handled this responsibility by laying an extensive siege to Tobruk starting from April. The siege lasted until December of the same year. In the following year, he led another mission with the Africa Corps and successfully outshined the competitors, and took complete control of the city. Later known as the Battle of Gazala, this was one of the biggest battles of Rommel's career. Shortly after that, Hitler promoted him to the ranks of field marshal. After rising to this prestigious rank, Rommel's popularity skyrocketed. He was widely popular for his unconventional battle tactics. Rommel was also extremely valiant, and unlike the army generals of the time, he always led his army facing the opponent. He never attacked from the rear and considered it against his principles. During his role as the field marshal, Rommel led and won several battles. He was enjoying the pinnacle of success at the time and was also nicknamed Desert Fox because of his valiant and yet sudden strategic attacks. People loved him for his brave feats and kind demeanor. He was thus called People's Marshal for his unconditional support to the masses. Rommel also gained significant popularity among the Arabs. They lauded him as a liberator as he liberated the country from British oppression. Owing to these many successes, Rommel earned the title of a successful and popular general and an extremely competent German leader. Defeats Despite being extremely popular for his strategic battle tactics, Rommel's fame as a field marshal was unexpectedly short. Within five months of the iconic Battle of Gazala, the troops from Britain successfully captured Tobruk once again. The battle occurred at El Alamein, an Egyptian city and despite Rommel's best effort, they lost the battle. Following the defeat of North Africa, Rommel was sent to Europe to monitor the defense strategies along Atlantic coast. This was almost a year after the defeat, in 1943. Another year later, in 1944, Rommel was tasked with monitoring the defense actions against a potential invasion from the Allied troops. Even though Rommel lived up to his responsibilities, and lead the defense successfully, he also expressed dissent and concerns about Hitler's efficiency in driving peace and his reasons to participate and wage the war. It is believed that he shared these concerns with some trusted friends who assured him power and leadership position after overthrowing Hitler. Rommel wasn't disloyal and he, therefore, discarded the suggestion. He was also unaware of the fact that the same group was contemplating the assassination of Hitler. Death On 6 June 1944, almost 150,000 troops from the Allied forces reached Normandy. They bravely invaded the existing forces and drove a major push around France. At that time, Rommel was certain that Germany wouldn't win the war and thus discussed the possibility of surrendering with peers and colleagues. Following this event, almost a month and a half later, a certain group of German troops attempted to assassinate Hitler. When this murder plot was further investigated, 
officials found his connection with the attackers and he was therefore implicated as part of the same plot. German officials deemed him guilty of attempting to assassinate Hitler. Despite his efforts, Rommel could not justify or establish his innocence to the troops. After this, German officials offered Rommel an option to avoid any form of public trial in a bid to protect his wife and children. He was asked to kill himself to avoid any public disgrace. Rommel acquiesced. On 14 October, the same year, he was escorted to a remote spot with fellow German troops. This was the same spot he chose to commit suicide. He consumed a cyanide capsule to expedite death and finally died moments later. The general public was informed that Rommel died suffering injuries from British troops. Rommel was 52 at the time of his death. Despite differences and other implications, German troops offered a complete military burial for Rommel and Hitler also ordered a full day for his official commemoration and mourning.